The VGX token, is it a buy, is it not? Voyager Digital, they are becoming a massive retail, they are becoming a massive hub for retail investors. I want to get into this coin today. It's something that I've been looking at for a while now and I want to get into all the ins and outs of why you should probably think about holding VGX in 2022. All right guys, so a couple quick things. I want to go over the growth today. I want to explain why I think this company is going to be so big going forward. You know me, I like the slow growth. There's a lot of things pumping today, VGX probably being one of them, but VGX is something that I think can grow throughout your plans and maybe even be kind of that bear market buster. So I think it's one that you should really think about holding and keeping into your portfolio, okay? So a couple things I wanna get into. VGX started this year at 43,000 funded accounts. It's already over a million. Already over a million. I can't, that growth, exponential, I don't know. Do the math, just over a million funded accounts. That's crazy. And they're just selling only in the US right now and they're only doing retail investors. They don't care about institutions, which we will get into just a little bit later here, okay? Their first thing I wanna start with is their marketing. Their marketing has stepped up tenfold. They were actually the first to go after athletes. People think, oh, crypto.com, you know, they're throwing 700 mil after over our 20 years at you know the crypto.com center or whatever. Who cares? Why, why do that much when you don't need to spend that much? So Voyager looking at it at a different way. They're going after, you know, the National Women's Soccer League. I saw them just go after. And and I'm going to get to why I think that's important. They got Gronkowski, you know, NASCAR, Dallas Mavericks. So they're getting some pretty big partnerships as well, just not spending as much money. I don't disagree with that necessarily, but here's the thing. You can start getting women more involved with crypto because let's be honest, more men are involved in crypto than women. So they're going after someone that they're going after a group that is not very well marketed to. So I really think down the road, this could be huge. It could be massive, uh, especially the implications it could have if they, they're already funding people's accounts, uh, these National Women's Soccer League players' accounts to get them started into crypto. So I, think, I, I honestly think that that's a good idea. Typically, I would be like, hey, let's go after the big dogs, but I kind of like the way they're going at this route. Steve, Steve Ehrlich is a very smart CEO. He clearly knows where he's going with this app and with this media. He's been in E-Trade for a while, started in E-Trade. So I do think he knows what he's doing. Which leads me into their team. I want to get into their team just to leave uh, just a little bit. Their CEO, Steve Ehrlich, obviously he knows what he's doing. He's very versed in E-Trade, very versed in um, you know anything digital. He knows what's going on there, an app. Uh, and he's built a team that comes from many different places and many different avenues. So everybody's looking at this in a different way, which is great. You don't want, when you're, even when I've started my business, I don't want a yes man or yes woman sitting next to me and just following me around everywhere with everything that I do. I don't want that. I need someone that's going to challenge me. That's going to challenge my decisions. Someone that's sitting in the sideline being like, that's a dumb idea. Because if you just have yes men and yes women, your company is not going to grow. You need different points of view. So when he brought on Oscar Salazar, he was one of the guys that uh, helped develop the Uber app. This is, this is different ways to kind of create this natural, global, and massive um, app that can run very swiftly. This, this is from people who have already done it. So I love the way he set up his team and the way they, they've set up their you know, kind of platform and their team going forward. And you know me, I'm big on teams, so I got to make sure that there's solid teams out there. Next up is how they're how they're focusing on retail. Nobody is doing what they're doing in the retail space. Yeah, are they taking small steps? For sure, they're only in the U.S., let's be honest. They did get listed on Coinbase with their Voyager token, but honestly, you should probably just buy it on Voyager. You get sweet rewards. But anyways, they're focusing on us, the retail investors. They don't do institutions. They don't want institutions. That's not what they do. So their growth is going to be slower, let's be honest, because most of those exchanges that are huge are selling to a lot of uh, institutions. So to have that two-way market, you have to be able to go out and get these institutions with pretty big money, and they've got to be able to make those big buys. Here's one thing that I think people overlook, especially when they're going after the retail investor and the newer retail investor, is that they only use US dollars. Even when I first got into crypto, and I got my Binance account, I got my Qcoin account, and I have, what other account do I have? I don't know what, oh, crypto.com. So I have those four accounts, including Voyager. I didn't even know what I was doing, how to transfer it, how to put, and then you, then you have tax implications and how to put you know, this crypto into this currency. I, I mean, to cross chain currencies, I didn't know what I was doing. So them simply using the US dollar, which pretty much everybody's gonna use when they first start uh, using Voyager and they first start getting into crypto, 
that's huge. I can't tell you why Voyager's app is so simple. That's typically why I use it 90% of my time with 90% of my money, just because of simplicity. I feel safe selling it and buying and trading on Voyager. That's why I use it. It also makes the taxes easier because you're not having to buy USDT to buy B, to buy Bitcoin to then send it over to your wallet to send it over to here your MetaMask and send it back and then buy an ETH. I mean, it's just it's a little bit more simple. Can you dive as far on Voyager into crypto as you could with other companies and other exchanges? No, you, you just can't. But you can get what you need. A lot of their tokens have already went through a process to even get on Voyager. So. I think they have your back as well. That's why I really do love this company. I love where they're going to go in the future. I think they are just beginning. One of the big things about investors is their, is their rewards. What do you get from it? So they obviously have a debit card coming out. You can spend the debit card, and a lot of people think you're spending your Bitcoin or you're spending your crypto. You're not. They already do. Voyager already does the switch for you where you're just spending dollars, and you're getting rewards in, the, in crypto, and you're getting a, a 9% stake or a 9% interest rate if you're holding USDC the, um, on their app as well so the rewards is massive in comparison to anybody else's rewards that i've ever seen i do want to go over just a couple quick i wouldn't i don't know if i say problems but issues they do need to work out so i've been using voyager for my predominant um exchange or whatever you want to call it my predominant app for a year now and a couple things that i did have is about probably three months ago my I, I revalidated my my account. I had to put my face in an ID in and all this stuff, and my money was just gone. Like I just didn't see it. For, and it said it could take up to three weeks to validate. I'm like, so I can't trade my at the time about 100 grand I had in the account. No, it's not there anymore. It's about to have that now. But anyways, I couldn't trade it. Couldn't see it. And it was like seven days. I wrote them a message and didn't get anything back. So that was I did eventually get it back. They did get it figured out. It probably took six to set six to eight days to to get my money back in there to where i could trade it now she the the representative who emailed me back was sweet was very nice and, and got it covered she's like your money is always safe with us so it was reassuring but when my account was just gone for seven days i'm like and there's a massive dip so i wanted to buy more i wanted to buy more uh crypto i couldn't I had to go on my other exchanges to buy it and i didn't know in the balance what was going on with my money over here what if it shot to the moon and i needed to sell it I couldn't have sold it because my account was being validated. I don't know what was going on with that. I don't know if that's with everybody or if that was just, a, you know, kind of a one-off thing. But that was definitely something that uh, kind of scared me a little bit. Ended up working out just fine. Next up, another issue that I see possible is that going after just retail investors and trying to stay in the United States only, is that eventually going to stifle growth? Because eventually you're going to have to go bigger. You're probably going to have to go, you know, internationally. And and I don't know if that's their plan. I think, I think they're, you know, kind of kicking that ball down the road a little bit. But I don't want to say that for sure. I don't know how much you can grow. Eventually, you are going to hit that ceiling in the United States. So I feel like you should probably start getting on top of um, how much further you can grow this so we can get, a obviously, a better price action, which we'll get into here in a second. Okay, let's get into their price action just a little bit, just to take a quick peek at their token and see how it's going. Um, all right, so VGX, we're, oh, this is, this is, this must be from yesterday. I was looking at it. Okay, we're up about 8% today, which looks great. It was down. Anything under $3, that's where I'm buying at. Anything under $3, I would start my position there. Again, that's going to come down, I think, in the bear market. I think you're going to be able to get this for like maybe $1.50, $1.75 at some point in time in the bear market. That's just my opinion. Their market cap right here, about $900 million. That was, that was way down uh, eventually. That was way down earlier. But you see their, their chart is nice and smooth. It looks pretty dang good. I know they had a little bit of a run up in the beginning where they went to I think like seven bucks or something. But uh, other is it was it seven? Yeah, I think it was like seven bucks. I'm only on the one day. Yeah, so just just about seven dollars uh, a few months ago, right? Was their peak. And I, I really think their price action looks very good. They're they're way undervalued as far as market cap. Now I understand you're probably thinking right now, well, well, Colin, they don't do international and, and they're not going to be as big as crypto.com or FTX or whatever. You may be right for right now, but again, they are building slowly to eventually, I think, bust into these other markets pretty quickly. 
And once they do that and they have a great foundation here and everything's already built, it's very similar to my other cryptos that I hold. I think that it's going to go out and it's going to go out pretty quickly, okay? And it's going to go out with little bugs versus, you know, like Solana releasing it and has a freaking breakdown every week, which is another video I'm going to go over and it just pisses me off to even have to bring that up. But here we are nonetheless. All right, so to finish this video up, where's the price going? Where's the, I see 7 billion by the end of this bull run, in my opinion. I think that's realistic. That's going to be between about a 90,000 and 110,000 ish Bitcoin. That'll get the price to 25 to 28 dollars for the VGX token. I, I think that's absolutely realistic. I think that that's nothing that's too crazy compared to these other ones at crypto, you know, dot com and FTX market cap and all that stuff is already pretty high. So I think that's definitely legit for the basis that they're building at VGX and the things they have going for them. To sum this video up, why I like the Voyager token so much, number one, by far, nothing even close, it's their simplicity. They are so easy to use. They are friendly to people like you and I. When I was for, I kind of have it figured out now, obviously, but it took me a year and a whole lot of research, but people don't have the time I had to put into crypto. They don't. They simply need to be able to buy it. That is what Voyager is going after, their simplicity. They, you can be, you can download the app and you can start trading crypto in three minutes. In three minutes, you can do all that. No other app is gonna allow you that flexibility. It's just not gonna happen. Not that quickly to where you understand it, you can see your money, you can sell it, you just, you get it a lot easier. And I think that's because of their backgrounds of their teams and the development of their apps. Obviously, that is what is going to set them apart in the end. How quickly do they grow? Who cares? 2025, I see I see this as, as, as being you know way higher. I don't even wanna give a price prediction because I don't know. This bull run, I do feel confident with a $7 billion market cap, $25 to $28 is probably where I'm looking at. So really, anywhere buying now, in my opinion, you'd be just fine. I love the Voyager app. It's my number one app. It's the number one app that I'm going to keep using unless something better, greater and better comes out, but I don't see it happening. Why don't you guys throw your favorite apps down below? What you like about VGX, what you like about the Voyager app, if you do use it. If you don't use it, why don't you use it? I think it's something everybody should use. As always, this is not financial advice. This is simply what I'm doing on my journey of crypto and what Joe's doing and so on and so forth. I don't even know why I need to say that. I don't feel like I need to say that, but I'm saying it so I don't get sued or something crazy like that. All right, guys, we really do appreciate you being with the fittest crypto channel on YouTube. We will be back with another one shortly. Thank you.